quick disclaimer. Everything in this video and all of my videos are my opinion based on detailed research that I perform. That said, I would recommend doing your own research before you make up your mind. Thank you. Meghan Markle has been suffering a lot of public defeats lately. Last year, she released a book called The Bench. Despite several PR attempts to amplify sales, it clearly was a failure, with the book quickly making its way into bargain bins. For her 40th birthday in August, Meghan launched the 40 by 40 initiative, where she invited her famous friends as well as everyone else to donate 40 minutes of their time to help working mothers re-enter the workforce. The initiative was criticized for being gimmicky with people wondering if 40 minutes is really sufficient to help women make such an important transition. Meanwhile, the video itself was extremely uncomfortable to watch. What about an afternoon tea with your chickens? No, see, I don't really think that tea with the chickens is what we oh have in mind. God. and overall did a huge belly flop out in the market, with very few people engaging with the initiative. To add insult to injury, much was made about the Obamas inviting Meghan and Harry to the former president's 60th birthday party, only to have no invitation extended, further cementing the terrible truth that Harry and Meghan were becoming less and less relevant every day. In September 2021, the pair were featured on Time's 100 Most Influential list and were met with widespread mockery. Thanks to their repeated desire for private and attention simultaneously. The photos only made the matter worse since they were heavily edited and Harry looked strange, unsure, smaller, and as a lot of people pointed out, like Meghan's hairdresser. Look, a lot has been made about this cover of Harry and Meghan, the one where the Duchess is wearing white. <laughs> Some people are comparing that photograph to uh, Harry looking like a hairdresser. <laughs> sort of, the worst. Uh, looking at his work with uh, Meghan's luscious locks. Soon after, in November, Meghan sat down with Ellen, where she shared stories of her underprivileged past, despite growing up in an affluent neighborhood in Los Angeles and going to private schools her entire life. But that wasn't even the most embarrassing part of the interview. Okay. Do a squat if you can hear me. Okay. All right. Okay. Perfect. All right. Mm. I'm going to hold this against my I'm head. I'm going to hold this against my head. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> After the Duchess of Cambridge's success on the red carpet for the James Bond premiere in October, Meghan tried to bask in her own red carpet moment to keep up with her sister-in-law. Unfortunately, she chose an event for honoring veterans, which really isn't an appropriate moment to make it all about you now, is it? Since Meghan and Harry have had several awkward moments as they try to recreate the essence of royal daily life, but in California. The cringiest one being when Meghan tried to insert herself into the trophy ceremony with Harry and his polo teammates. And in May of 2022, Netflix dealt a blow to Meghan when they announced the cancellation of her show, Pearl, which was meant to portray a young girl based on Meghan herself. But the biggest shock came during the Jubilee celebrations at St. Paul's Cathedral, where the couple were booed, but worse yet, relegated to the second row further cementing that their reputations and relevance are in freefall on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. While Harry frowned and Meghan smiled through the festivities, their displeasure was clear, since the pair were quick to sit out of the remainder of the Jubilee events and demanded an apology from the palace for their treatment. A narcissist is so heavily convinced of their superiority. This is the reason behind their top-down approach to their relationships with everyone around them, as well as with the general public. It's also why they are prone to bullying those they consider their their underlings. But when people and the public initially get to know them and fall for their charms, they revel in the attention and the long-awaited acknowledgement of their superiority. I mean, look at the kind of reception Meghan and Harry used to get at the beginning of their relationship and around the time of their marriage. Oh, well, there you go. There's the cheer, Ed. There's the cheer for the newest member of the royal family, of course, the, the Duchess of Sussex. Incredibly she elegant as, as well. They both look beautiful. So elegant, so elegant. Um, Duchess of Sussex here wearing Givenchy. Um, the She's also wearing a Philip Tracy hat as well. The Duchess of Sussex here. Yeah, that's beautifully stylish, isn't it? With the black and white there and also the collared neckline. As you say, we'll yes. wait and see what else awaits with that outfit when she steps out of the carriage. Many oohs and ahs. Many no oohs and ahs. 
They were incredibly popular with the British public and beyond, since more than a billion people turned in to watch their marriage. And while they and their supporters will continue to blame racism as the root of their unmistakable descent into unpopularity, the facts are the facts. Harry and Meghan were popular and were well-liked in the beginning. The reasons behind their fall have been their actions and their attitudes, hence why the American elite have mostly abandoned them as well. So how does a narcissist handle this level of devaluation of their reputation? Typically, when a narcissist starts to get unmasked by the people around them, this is the time they start to map out their escape route. Narcissists often live several different lives in a single lifetime, as they jump from social circle to social circle, shedding their past like it's an old coat and embracing new friends, new family, a new identity for a fresh start to continue to maintain their sense of elevated importance in the eyes of these newly acquired people. This is true for Megan as she has markled a long list of friends and family, leaving them in her wake as she carved her path to the top. As Megan secured her first big acting role on Suits, she cut loose her then-husband, Trevor, by mailing her wedding rings back to him. She had a falling out with her longtime childhood friend, Nikki Pretty, as Nikki started to see and call out her entitled behavior. Here's what Nikki had to say during an interview with the Daily Mail. Even by season two of Suits, she was turning down lunch with us because she said she'd be recognized, said Pretty. I felt if I questioned her behavior, I'd be left on the outside. Her time became increasingly important. When she was in town, she'd want you to drop everything to see her. If I was busy, it would be, why don't you want to see me? I'm here, let's hang out. There were instances when I felt she developed a sense of entitlement because she was on the show. She went on to say that she eventually realized Megan was no longer the friend I'd grown up with anymore. While living in Canada during her role on Suits, Megan reinvented herself from actress to socialite. It's around this time that she was dating chef Corey Vitiello, but quickly dropped him as well as she saw her path into British society. There she used and then quickly dropped Lizzie Cundy, who helped her break into a world that she didn't know. But this pattern didn't stop after she married Prince Harry. A few years into their marriage, Meghan and Harry had broken with Harry's friends as well as his family. Here is where Meghan miscalculated. Meghan saw that she and Harry were popular royals, but she made the mistake of thinking that their popularity was about them and not about the roles they embodied within the family. This is an understanding that Her Majesty the Queen and Prince Philip had maintained throughout the years as they too have and had been incredibly popular, but never embraced the public excitement as a reflection on themselves as individuals, but rather the roles they embody and what they represent, which is the crown. Unable to make this distinction, Meghan believed that she could nab this newfound global recognition and popularity and take it with her where she wanted, including to a house in Montecito, where she could carve out her own throne and rule like an American queen. But as I have already cataloged at the beginning of this video, this idea was far from reality. Instead of maintaining or growing her popularity, Meghan's influence has eroded beyond belief, and her brand is in tatters after multiple instances of inconsistencies found in her stories of being the ultimate victim at the hands of the British tabloids, public, and the royal family. What little public goodwill she had built has long been lost, and the polls and the boos are clearly reflective of that. And the royal family have played a very controlled game with Meghan and Harry giving the couple zero, and I mean zero, photo opportunities with the queen to prevent them from further attempts to use the royal family as merching opportunities like they have in the past. The couple were not allowed onto the balcony, and during the St. Paul's Cathedral service, they were firmly seated far from the senior royals, and Her Majesty the Queen refused to be photographed with her granddaughter, Lily. So Meghan now faces her ultimate challenge. Having broken out onto the world stage back in 2016 and become a public commodity with millions of people watching her every move and pinpointing major inconsistencies of her behavior, where is there left for her to run now? How can Meghan fall back on her old faithful tactic of cutting people loose and starting fresh? This is the same situation that Amber Heard is living through. After being successfully unmasked as a manipulator and as a liar, save for a few precious backers, Amber stands alone in the face of a public unwilling to forgive or forget. Megan's situation isn't as bad as Amber's, but like Amber, I think Megan is going to be unrelenting as she continues to attempt to rebrand and reinvent herself in the public eye. So how exactly does a narcissist deal with the reality of their decline? The answer is they don't. They refuse to accept it and will continue to fight tooth and nail to hang on to their fading limelight. A narcissist cannot and will not admit defeat. If we the people cannot see the truth, or should I say Megan's carefully crafted version of the truth, 
truth, then the fault lies forever with us and never with her. A never-ending barrage of stories trying to rebuild her position as a humanitarian, as a down-to-earth princess, are going to continue to rain down on us. There are still more public falls to come yet for the pair, with rumors floating around that their expensive contracts with Spotify and Netflix are in jeopardy. But this will only harden Megan's resolve. She's going to do anything in her power to wrangle the public back onto her side, whether we like it or not. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And just a reminder, I do have an entire playlist on understanding narcissism and Meghan Markle, so don't forget to check that out. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.